Now, to even go further, right, apart from that, if you notice here, I can go back to the main page, right? Fill and break. But guess what? I can also program these buttons for my own purposes, right? If I turn on the user tab, for an example, and I go down to the bottom of the screen right there again, you can see that now these are user functionalities, okay? So I have access to voice one, voice two, voice three, and voice four, which are the four voices that are associated with the style, right? So for every style you're performing with, okay, you can have four lead voices tied to that style. Normally, you would have to go into where it says voice to A, B, C, D, okay? And you can touch and access those four voices right there. If I turn on the voice to A, B, C, D, then what happens is these four voices are selected based on my arranger. If I'm in arranger A, I'm gonna have voice one come out, okay? So right now my lead voice is gonna be voice one, okay? If I go to variation B, automatically my jazz guitar comes out, right? So this is one way that you can actually access those voices. Or if you come over here to the user tab, you can have direct access to those voices on the bottom of the screen, irrespective of what arranger you're in. Again, you look at the whole idea of being able to have smooth controls, always in that direction, arrange your functionality and capabilities right there at your fingertips. Because as an arranger performer, you want to be able to go in and out real quick when, in function, uh, when you're looking at different voice uh, settings, voice picking different voices, or picking different functionalities. And in addition to this, I can actually go into the user tab where I can actually program even seven more functionalities that I want to have at my fingertips, okay? So that means that it's technically 14 different things you can program and have access to here, or go back to the factory settings, turn off the user tab, and go back in where you can have your access to your uh, different uh, functions. So again, the keyboard does ship out in a particular way, but you as an individual can pick and choose how you want to have certain things at your fingertips. Not everyone's fingertips are the same. So some people might choose certain functionalities, others might choose others. And if you want to copy how other arranger products are out there, yes, you can do that as well too on the event. That's what makes the event professional or one of the features that makes the event professional. Let's move on. Okay. Somebody's asking about uh, Miss Roseanne's T, the quality of the buttons on the event. How durable are these uh, buttons? Good question, indeed. Now, for those of you who have been with Keytron for many, many, many years, going back, back, back when it was uh, distributed through the Sultan uh, company, you shall notice that Keytron keyboards are generally built like tanks. Sometimes we also, we actually say they're built like German tanks. It's a very, very robust uh, structure, indeed. Now, we decided to use buttons because, of course, we're going also based off of history of our instruments. For those who have the older Audia products, if you notice there, the buttons were very robust and very firm. And these are buttons that have been proven to test the tides of times, right? It, this is not only true in the keyboard industry. This is also true when it comes to the automotive industry. For an example, if you look at a company like Toyota, Toyota does not just jump into new technology right away. They take time to process and they always work off of existing and proven technology. And that's why when you get a Toyota Corolla, for example, you still have access to your temperature gauges and your temperature knobs right there on the dashboard. But if you were to buy, for an example, say a Mercedes-Benz or BMW, Sometimes you have to search to figure out where the temperature gauge is. So again, it depends. You know, sometimes modern technology or way advanced technology may not necessarily be the best thing, especially in your particular field, right? So here again, we're, yes, we are using modern technology, but certain things that are reliable, such as having a button panel, an actual physical button, which is a hard press, such as these on board, these, are, these have been proven to last longer. Uh, we've also had people on other forums who have complained about rubber touches because after a while, especially with the cheaper keyboards, either the rubber wears out or becomes loose. Again, it's rubber. You have to make your, your own decision, uh, which is a lot more sturdy, you know, having rubber or having uh, actual uh, hard uh, plastic. So that would be the response to that one um, using that. And Joanna P says the idea of the wheel, it seems as if the data wheel is used very often for any and everything are there other ways to access pages without using the wheel yes diana they are okay and this again goes back to uh what the, you know how you can access different things on the event so if i go to the screen again 
we're going to go down here and let's uh, look at this real quick. If I look at the this particular page right now, okay, if I want to do a voice selection, I go in here, that's my voice one or my voice two. Let's go to voice one. Once I'm in this selection over here, you notice that the first 10 voices are displayed on the screen. Now, of course, yes, you can turn the, pay, the wheel to access the next page, okay? And it tells you in the top left-hand corner of that box what page you're in. Piano page six of six. If I turn the wheel backwards, it's page five and four. And no, the wheel is not, does not jump all over the place. If I turn it counterclockwise, I'm going down, all right? Page three, if I turn it again counterclockwise, page two. If I turn it clockwise, I'm going forward, all right? Page three page four. Another way you can change the pages without necessarily messing with the wheel is also to use the enter button. If I do that, if you notice, it's changing right there, right? So I can change the pages and let me just go in right quick so you can see the page directly. And just by pressing the enter button, you can page forward to the next page, right? Now also, depending on what screen you are in, you have different functionality of the wheel and different functionality of the enter button. And remember, you also have the programmable buttons on the bottom and you can program those buttons on the bottom, right? You can actually program this when you go to the user tab and you can program the uh, bottom section to act as your page plus or page minus, right? So for an example, I can go in here to user. If I go to the screen real quick, you can see that and I can program, let's say for example, the first location there, I can make this button, it's gonna, let's say, touch that, and it's asking me, what do I wanna assign to that button? And I can move down where it says page plus, and I can go down, voice turn, page up, page down. Okay, there it is right there. So I can use the buttons to change the pages, for an example. If I go here and I pick uh, PDF page down, or text page down, registration up or registration down, I can assign the button on the bottom of the screen to use them as my page plus or my page minus. So that means I have three dedicated ways to be able to go between pages, right? I can use the wheel, which is very quick, but then when you have so many pages, the wheel becomes cumbersome, right? So I can use the page or the enter button or I can use the page on the, um, on the uh, program, the page on the bottom as well, uh, the bottom of the screen there. So I hope that does address that particular uh, question.